If you're in pain, it's a horrible experience. It's only natural to want to know what's causing it. Perhaps you've already been told the cause by your doctor or given different answers from other professionals, leading you to become confused. It's also likely that you've tried to tackle the cause of the pain, but the pain has persisted or returned, again causing confusion regarding the source of the pain. My name is Daniel Lawrence, I'm a physiotherapist and you're watching The Physio Channel. This is a video for people suffering from pain who want to have a better understanding of why. In this video, I will explain what pain is and what pain is not. Pain is always real and pain is not all in your head. This is the most common misunderstanding when medical professionals try to explain pain to patients. Research has taught us much about pain over the last 20 years. Some people, including professionals, still use traditional assessment and treatment methods which are now scientifically outdated. I produce this video to help you have a more informed understanding of your pain. The good news is that just learning about and understanding your pain can reduce it. This is because a greater understanding of pain experiences and how to manage them can reduce worry, anxiety and stress all of which are powerful influences on pain severity. Pain. It's a single word that can mean so many different things, from a niggling ache to excruciatingly stabbing. It's nearly always an unpleasant sensation and often has an emotional attachment. As I mentioned, pain is always real, but because you cannot see it on a scan or remove it surgically, there is often an unspoken void between you and the person assessing your pain. They are reliant on your explanation. You may have felt that your doctor or therapist did not fully understand your pain. The two great challenges of pain assessment are determining its source and understanding what it means to you as a patient and as an individual. So expressing your feelings about the pain could be much more helpful than saying it's a 7 out of 10 or an 11 out of 10. This is because your thoughts and feelings can have a significant impact on your pain. And I'll explain this in more depth. I mentioned at the start of this video that the notion that pain is all in your head is incorrect. Let's have a look at what is correct with an outline of our historic and then current understanding of pain without too much medical jargon. The old model of pain is this. Damage occurs to a part of your body, pain signals go to the brain, you feel pain, and you respond by moving away from harm. This is the outdated theory. This is the updated version. Damage or potential damage occurs. Signals, not pain signals, just signals, travel along the nerves through your spinal cord to your brain, where they are interpreted. To keep things simple, your brain may interpret them as harmful or not harmful. Your brain decides if pain is an appropriate reaction. Pain is an output of the brain, but it's nearly always in response to an input. The brain can also reduce the incoming signals by triggering your brain's own natural pain relief. By now, hopefully you can appreciate that pain is not simple and its complexity is due to the brain's involvement. You cannot have pain without the brain. Positively, this means it is possible to use our brain to reduce our pain. But because our brain is not under full conscious control, we cannot simply wish pain away. And there may still be a physical trigger for the pain. But we need to realize and recognize how the brain can alter our experience of pain. Let's step back from the detail for a second while I share a famous pain story with you. This is a well-known pain story of a young builder who jumped onto a seven inch nail, which penetrated right through the front of his boot. As you can imagine, this was excruciatingly painful for him and he required strong sedation for the nail to be removed. After removal and upon inspecting his foot, he realized the nail had gone in between his toes and his foot was absolutely fine. So, in this rare example, the input to the brain was both visual and the sensation of the nail between the toes, which was interpreted as highly damaging, and therefore the brain's output was lots of pain. 
In my physiotherapy clinic, I commonly witness significant pain reduction if a patient is given credible evidence that there is no damage or no serious issues, much like the young builder after seeing his undamaged foot. So when a signal arrives at the brain indicating damage or potential harm, what factors can amplify or reduce pain output? The answer is potentially everything, including knowledge, sleep quality, your job, social interactions, culture, and physical activity levels. Scientists often group these into the following three categories, biological, psychological, and social. The common collective medical term for these are biopsychosocial factors. Here are some examples. Biologically, aside from any obvious physical damage, the nerve sensors can malfunction and send incorrect signals to the brain. This would be like a warning light flashing on your car's dashboard, but the mechanic could not find any fault with your engine, instead finding a fault with a sensor. Sometimes a physical problem can trigger a sensor, but the sensor then gets more sensitive and stuck on, even after the physical problem heals. Psychologically, depression and anxiety are two of the biggest modulators of the pain experience. Of course, these can also be caused by pain itself, but recognizing them as contributors and seeking professional help is a route to gaining control. It's also widely accepted that stress can affect the body and mind in many ways that increase pain perception. And interestingly, being in love has shown to reduce pain. The study of pain really is very broad. There are also social factors to consider. Social interactions, what we learn from others, the pain stories they tell us, our culture, and the professional advice we receive can also make us feel differently about our pain. So at this point, I just want to summarize what we've discussed. Pain is most often triggered by an initial physical problem, but not always. Remember the nail. The relationship between the physical problem and the pain you feel can then start to separate. Our brain can become overprotective, producing pain from harmless stimuli like touch and simple everyday movements. It seems that the longer the pain persists, the more independent the pain becomes. As the pain becomes more independent, the contribution from the brain increases and the likelihood of a physical trigger reduces. In conclusion, even if you are still investigating a potential physical cause of your pain, hopefully now I've made you aware of the other contributors to the complexity of your pain. Hopefully now you'll have a better understanding of what pain is and what it's not. Thank you for watching the Physio channel. More content is on the way, but we already have over 250 videos on the channel, so please subscribe to stay informed. If you're a fitness, health or medical professional, please join the Physio Channel Facebook group. And if you're a patient, you may wish to visit and like the Physio Channel Facebook page. You can also find me on Instagram and there are some of my online course links in the video description below. Please leave a comment and click the thumbs up if you found this video helpful. Feel free to share it with patients and friends as well. That's it for now, I'll see you in the next video.